Last week, Bristol's culinary wizards... Casimir. ...triumphed in the first semi-final. Well done. You can smile. Now four restaurants will compete in the second semi-final for a chance to take on Casimir in the grand final. Competing for that place, the best of British, Sheffield's The Milestone. Indian winners from Bradford, Prashad. My best North African, Azu from London. And finally, winner of the French heat, Winchingham Fields from Lincolnshire. First, I want to know if they've corrected the problems that I identified early in the competition. You need to look at your service. To help me find out, I sent in a team of secret diners. What is in that? That's horrid. But there's a big surprise in store for these restaurants. I'm going to throw two of them out right now. It's sudden death elimination. Which two restaurants will survive? First to face possible elimination are French winners, Winchingham Fields. Head chef and owner Colin is aiming for the ultimate fine dining experience. He's created a luxurious dining room and serves exquisite food. But I thought Colin was trying too hard, overloading his diners with too many appetizers and too many waiters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Boo, any more? Look at all you guys. Just check there's no one in here. Uh, I don't know. With their place in the final at stake, I've since sent in another secret diner, Rob Allison, an expert foodie with a critical eye. Oh. And I've sent all my semi-finalists their own copy of the footage so that they know what I'm judging them on. Yeah, this is our second appetizer or mousse bouche. Um, sometimes these little touches get too much and oh, I've ordered my meal. I want my long scenes. I've told Colin endless times Less is more. And here we go again. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Perfect, thank you. This dish looks absolutely delicious, but it's not mine. <laughs> oh. Really perfectly cooked long steam. It's beautiful. I mean, the mix upon the, the starter, I mean, disaster. Um, I Actually, mean, I it happens probably 1% of the time, and. and Guess what? It's him. Yeah, it's just not good enough. Next to face undercover scrutiny are Indian winners Prasad from Bradford. Somebody pass the booty, please! Mum Kalshi and daughter-in-law Minal produce some of the best food I've ever eaten. And it's all vegetarian. That is delicious. One mouthful of that, I feel like I'm back in Mumbai. No, I can't leave that to waste. So I've got to eat some more of that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jesus. Son Bobby runs front of house with charm and warmth. Cheryl Farmer is a food expert with 20 years' experience. I'm expecting her to love this place as much as I did. But when she went in undercover, Bobby wasn't anywhere to be seen. Instead, another member of staff was running front of house. It seems like the man's rushed off to go back to, uh, to, go back to his cooking. It would be nice to be offered a drink at that before, wasn't it? Mind. Nobody asking the secret diner for drinks, and they're just left alone. I mean, this doesn't even look like the same restaurant. Do a bit of sound proof in on the kitchen. It's nice to hear kind of chatter in the background, but you don't hear people scraping the fans out. You can hear this kitchen porter, by the sound of things, beating the hell out of his pans, cleaning. This looks like a completely different restaurant. Food was really lovely. It was um, all the dishes were really nicely spiced. My secret diners love the food. Um, thank God, because they're not enjoying the service. Gordon's going to absolutely crucify me. It's about getting it right every time. The contrast from that footage in comparison to what I received last time, it's night and day. Next to face my video evidence is a zoo from London. In the North African heat, head chef Chris produced some wonderful, authentic Algerian food. Sardines wow. and hummus. They're delicious. Merci. But my coach trip exposed some weaknesses front of house. On table four, can you remember what he did? That's done twice. I've sent in undercover critic Simon Davis to see if Chris has ironed out his front of house problems and is still sending out perfectly cooked food. And that's the chicken man. A little bit dry, the chicken. <laughs> Damn, disappointing. Uh, chicken, slightly overcooked, dry. Um, this actual sauce. 
lovely. I mean, actually, one of the nicest yeah, things yeah, I've yeah, tasted. Yeah. Simple, charming, and delicious, but they have to be consistent. Finally, it's the milestone from Sheffield. Run by four ambitious young men, this restaurant is reinventing classic British food. But they made errors when my last secret diner paid a visit. Would you eat that? Would you eat that? No. So why should I eat it? To progress in this competition, I need to know the milestone team are learning from their mistakes. It's really nice. It's really um, quite a nice, really nice texture. And it goes really nicely with the cumin seeds and the flatbread. Let's start with a little freebie, um, homemade hummus uh, with cumin and flatbread. Thank you. Next up, it's place fillets. Ooh, the fish tastes lovely. Served with a lemon pith puree. What is in that? That's horrid. Horrible lemon. Places are delicate. Fish and it needs help. Acidic, certainly, but not maybe lemon pith. Slightly bitter. It's not an abundance of fair stuff, is it? This is one girl in the tables. Foxy. My one problem with Milestone is their lack of experience. Can they get better? I'm... I'm uncertain. All four restaurants are waiting with baity breath for a phone call from me. They know that two of them are about to leave the competition. So tense. So tense. It's all on this phone call, really. As a restaurant, how may I help you? Hi, is that Chris? Oh, oui, monsieur. Hi, Simon. Hello, Gordon, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm a little bit stressed, um, but I'm well. Unfortunately, today, I have to eliminate two restaurants from the competition. Yeah. yeah. There's only one waitress trying to take care of eight or ten tables. You've got to match the food with the service, right? Yeah. Next grill was a little bit too dry, and the chicken was overcooked. A zoo. Right. Is not going any further in the competition. That's no problem. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. No worries. But continue doing what you're doing, will you? Okay. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, monsieur. Au revoir. And so it stops here. It's really disappointing for not winning. I, I'm like gutted. I wanted to win this competition with my soul. I'm taking a break. It's not going to get easier. Simon, I am really sorry. But you guys are going to have to keep on working incredibly hard as you switch the next round of. Oh! Oh! Congratulations. Oh, cheers, guys. Yeah. Just, I've just had a hard time. Well done. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Right. Oh, sure. <laughs> I can't put into words how much it, it, it means to me personally. It's the biggest thing I've ever done in my career. It's the second semi-final of my nationwide restaurant competition. Azu are out, and British Heat winners the Milestone have survived my sudden death elimination. They will now compete for a place in the final against either my best Indian, Prashad, or my best French restaurant, Winchingham Fields. Hi, is that Colin? Yes, it is. Hi, Bobby, it's Gordon. Hi, Gordon. Bobby? Yeah. I'm pissed off. Yeah. I have to eliminate two restaurants from this competition. When I saw those plates get put uh, down to the wrong uh, position, I, I got so frustrated because I could have screamed. Then you've got that level of support in the dying room. It should be absolute perfection. You've really shone up until now. And you have to focus in that restaurant on a daily basis. Yeah. Winchingham Field. Oh. 
is leaving the competition. Okay. I'm sorry. Right. Okay. Take care. Okay. Bye. 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 A bit gutting because I know we are, you know, um, so much better than, than that. But that's consistency for you. You, know, you need to be, you know, bang on every time, all the time. Right now, you need to focus because you're going through to the next stage. Oh! <laughs> Bobby, I will never ever let you I down again. You. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> they need to focus now, and he's been given a lifeline. And the restaurant across the board is too good to leave this competition. Two fantastic restaurants remain, both desperate for a place in the final. Now I've got a big shop for them. I'm about to pay a surprise visit to my two remaining semi-finalists. To help me decide on who should go through to the final, I've enlisted two trusted lieutenants for a second opinion on the strengths and the weaknesses of these amazing restaurants. Michelin star chef Angela Hartnett needs no introduction. An undercover diner Simon Davis, a top restaurant critic and a confirmed carnivore. It's time to surprise Prashad in Bradford. This is the smallest restaurant in the competition, but they have the biggest heart. I know they'll fight tooth and nail for a place in the final, and after letting my secret diner down, they'll need to. How did they react to it? Mortified. May I admit? Really mortified. I'll throw them a lifeline because I really believe in these guys, and today is going to be nothing less than perfect. Today, Prashad will need to pull out all the stops to impress us, but they have absolutely no idea that we're about to walk through the door. Hello. Hello. Yeah. How are you? Very good. How are you? Very well. Did you expect to see me, did you? No, I didn't. No. Have a seat. Yeah. Please, thank you. Oh, uh, when I heard he's here, I was so nervous and, oh, I get panicking, you know? I've just found my, my first bugbear. What? That bloody door alarm. Oh, yeah. Everyone steps in. <laughs> Welcome to Prashad. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very you. much. I'm very, very privileged to see you, actually. Any drinks for you? I'll have the mango lassi. The mango lassi. Yeah. Mango lassi as well, please. Thank okay. you. I'll have a faluda. Okay. All right. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Nice warm reception. Welcome. Yeah. Yeah. I know Prasad will be trying to impress me today, but every customer needs the same treatment. So I've got another trick up my sleeve. Angela's mum, Juliana, is here too. She's also a fantastic chef, and she'll be a secret extra pair of eyes and ears. And Bobby, we're up against it time wise today. We've got 90 minutes. Okay. So we can take the order as quick as possible. Thank you so much. We're hungry, and we want to try as much of this food as possible, so we're going to bombard the kitchen with orders. I'd like to go for the um, masala dosa. The hara bara kebab. And we have the pea. Pea kachori. And then maybe some puri as well. The chorli. The special shot. Corn roll as well, please. Anything else you'd recommend? Masala dosa. Best dosa I had was in Delhi so far. I'll I'll try one out. Yeah. Give me a masala dosa. Yeah, do that. Perfect. You can compete with Delhi. Guys, listen, yeah? I don't want any mistake. This is a big order. Minal is focused on my table, but will she pay as much attention to Angela's mum? In a great restaurant, every diner is a VIP. One person must room, but yeah, now. Quick, Wait. quick, I need now. Come on, hurry up. What are you doing? We're panicking. You don't need to panic, you don't need to be nervous. We're on fire. This is Prashad, this is what we do. Okay, the room is mine. Hey, the room is mine. Stick on, stick on, stick on, They're very vocal in the kitchen. I mean, yeah. very, very vocal in the kitchen. Mom, medium chat. Shouting is fine as long as it produces results. I need puris. Order is ready now. Thank you. Thanks. Lovely, thank you. Simon. Uh, thank you. Thank you. The contented silence at our table speaks volumes. Yeah. Absolutely delicious. Yeah. I'm yeah. really good. Fantastic. And I'm a major yeah. carnivore. Mm. Wow. That's delicious. Isn't it delicious? I mean, it really is. Dish after dish is delivered with charm. Angela, that's your zucchini and chana dal with no coriander. Thank you. Each one hitting way above the mark. So let's go Isn't that, that Thank fantastic? You. <laughs> that was amazing. It just looks so grand. Grand, authentic, and 
It smells amazing. It's like a banquet. Absolutely delicious. Yeah. That looks phenomenal, I think. Absolutely phenomenal. It's exceptional vegetarian cuisine. Mom! Yeah. Minel! Oh my god, they're loving the food. Yeah. Who's missing meat? Yeah. <laughs> Not me. It's time to give Prashad a collective appraisal. So, um, I was a little bit nervous coming back today, to be totally honest. Angela, how was it for you? I know, for me, phenomenal food. Absolutely phenomenal. Blown away. I thought it was so good. Masala dosa? Oh, as good as the one I had in Delhi. Yeah, yeah it was brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Simon? The stuff you do just, you know, beggars yeah. belief. That kofta with the cauliflower is just it's a revelation. Yeah, okay. um, food today, flawless, outstanding, lovely warm service. But we've been watching everything. I mean, every table. And there's another surprise because we have an extraordinary lady here, Mrs. Hartnett, Andrew's mum. Thank you. Hello. Mrs. Hartnett. <laughs> Right. See, this lady taught me how to cook, oh. and her mother oh. taught her how to cook. Oh, just so good. <laughs> <laughs> what did you honestly think, Mum? Did no, you like fabulous it? food. I love those balls with potatoes and dal. Everything is perfect. And Bobby, the service. Oh, it was wonderful. Good. Yeah, wonderful Thank food. You. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We are so pleased you are here. Good. Would you come back? Oh, God, yes. <laughs> 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 Today was about redemption, yeah, good, and you yeah. certainly redeemed yourselves. And yeah. this whole experience will help me decide on who's going through the final. Uh, thank you for a delicious, yeah. delicious yeah. lunch. Yeah. Can you do yeah. something with that door? Yeah, yeah? please, that alarm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you know, three heavyweights in the food industry turning up to an ex laundrette in the middle of Bradford, um, looking for fault, being demanding, being difficult. And could we find fault? No. We're back on track. We're back there. I think we're going to go and win. <laughs> My other semi-finalist is the milestone. OK, on the way to Sheffield. How will they cope with the three of us dropping in for a surprise dinner? Four guys that don't give up on anything. They rear their own pigs, wow. they make their own bread, they churn their own butter, yeah. and they really are pushing their boundaries out beyond belief. So uh, yeah. I think we'll be impressed. Put the watercress on very last as it's going. Since I first met these young guns, they've impressed me with their mixture of classic and creative British dishes. It's about Yorkshire people, Yorkshire chefs producing Yorkshire food. But they also run a cooking school and an outside catering company, as well as the restaurant. And I can't help but feel they're trying too hard. Straight upstairs? Yes. With so many fingers and so many pies, sometimes they've fallen short of perfection. Here we go. How are you? Good to see you again. Likewise, you didn't expect to see us, did you? No. Go right, sure. in. Simon, tonight I'm with two very influential guests and we're going to be looking at everything. Table for three. There's a table that's just come in and oh, the cereal oh, oh. complainers. They go everywhere and they just slate, you know, my what. <laughs> this evening's dinner menu for you. Thank you. Your adrenaline's pumping. He's the, he's the main man, isn't he? So he's the person to impress. I know that we focus on me and my guests. But how will they treat Angela's sister, Anne, who's eating on the other side of the dining room? It would be a lot more elaborate than I had the impression of from you really? guys. Yeah, just things like parmesan gnocchi, yeah. wild mushroom cannelloni. Quirky. Yeah, Do you yeah, know yeah. it's not your average local... Yeah, soil and shoots. You know it's radish snow. Think, yeah. They're pushing the boat out. Yeah, yeah, big time, yeah. yeah I just yeah. hope it tastes as good as it and sounds. Actually, it does seem nice and seasonal. Head chef Simon and sous chef James have made their mark by breaking all the rules serving up local ingredients with a quirky twist. For our starters, we've ordered black pudding with bacon, pepper mackerel with horseradish snow, and a tomato consomme with a flower pot full of tapenade for soil and pea shoots. Is there an earthquake? Was that your handshake? Simmer. 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 I feel like we're in Villa Bend, the flower pot, mate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very hard to eat a soup and navigate your way around. Eh? Yeah, yeah. 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 Things like this, I just want to throw it at the chef. We'll get his head and go. It's just gimmick, isn't it? Yeah. I'm going to see how it tastes. What is that? That is tapenade. How much tapenade can you put in a dish like that? I mean, I know that's the soil, but bloody hell. That doesn't make sense. Too much soil, less is more. And this is all they need to know, less yeah. is more. They're keen as mustard. I mean, really keen, but far too ambitious for their own good. The minute you start trying to become too clever, 
you're up for intense scrutiny. It's not going to like to affect it. Main course is next. For our mains, we've gone more conventional. Salmon wrapped in a herb crust, vegetarian cannelloni, and bavette of beef. I mean, they're attractive looking dishes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like the presentation. I actually think this is a really well sourced meat, well cooked, well handled. If I had any criticism, it would be the red wine jus, because mm -hmm. it's really sweet. It's almost the consistency of neat mm -hmm. ribena. How's your um, cannelloni got? It's actually very nice. Mushrooms mm -hmm. delicious. Definitely yeah, they can cook, yeah. but they just need to rain it back in. Finally, it's time for pudding. A tree of strawberry desserts, Bakewell tart. See, that looks nice. That looks good. And a great local cheese board. See, that and that fits. Yeah, 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 yeah. This thing here looks like it's out of Paris Hilton's bathroom. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. No. Really good. It looks delicious. And it tastes delicious. And red ice cream. Really nice. This looks great. That's actually the best thing I've eaten tonight. This one here? Yeah. That's actually nice. Time to call the team together for a debrief. Can I just say, that was delicious. Really good. Um, unfortunately, it didn't start like that. If there's one strong message, you're trying too bloody hard. I've tasted the greatness, and tonight has been a disappointment. Stick to what you're good at doing. Yeah. And for me, the secret of any good restaurant is how every other table has been looked after. And tonight, there's a no second surprise. We've actually got Angela's sister having dinner with us as well. Come over, Anne. Come over, James. Please. Oh, hey, how are you? Very well. Very well. Excellent. So, how was your night, Anne? Mixed, mixed. I didn't really like the bread. I thought the bread was a bit heavy. And um, I like the tomato thing, I have to say, but <laughs> I love all that. And what was your starter, James? I had the back pudding. It was quite sticky and quite, quite heavy. So, don't worry about trying to be too different when you're good at what you do. Get back to what you're good at doing and stick to that. Thank you very much. Good luck with everything, yes. Uh, I feel like I've been told off by my dad. No, about your points, though. Yeah. It's, it was constructive. So it's, we have to take it on chin and do what we can with it. It's the main thing. Yeah. I'm disappointed because I came back to the milestone for a magical experience, hoping they'd learnt, but they just want to be different. Tonight was a big disappointment. Two amazing contenders, Prashad from Bradford and the Milestone from Sheffield, are fighting to win the second semi-final of my restaurant competition. We want to serve every single customer like we do at home. Quick, now, 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 now! Later tonight, one of them will make it into the final and have the chance to be crowned my best restaurant. Prashad and Milestone once again have survived my secret diners and a flying visit which really turned both their restaurants upside down. They both now face one more gruelling test for a place in the final, a challenge that they've never faced before. I've called Prashad and the Milestone to meet me in North London. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You're probably thinking, what in the hell are we doing here this early in the morning? Standing in a pretty unimpressive room, yeah? And look at it, bare, bleak. This space now becomes your restaurants. And you're gonna transform these four walls into the most amazing pop-up restaurant. Only one restaurant's going through to the final. Make sure it's you. I'm given each of them one floor of this empty building. They've got just 12 hours to create an exciting, vibrant pop-up restaurant that will open its doors at 7 p.m. for one night only. Pop-up restaurants are one of the hottest tickets in the food world. They spring up in unexpected locations, cause a big storm, and then disappear overnight. Both restaurants will have a £2,000 budget. It will be split between the chefs... 500 is enough. ..and front of house. You want to feel like you're in a wedding. You want to feel like you're in a party. You've got to make and create that atmosphere. The challenge is massive. Neither restaurant has done anything like this before. It will push them to the very limits of their creativity and their ingenuity. Matt, 
players. We need to decide on players. The decisions they make now could cost them a place in the final. Wow, I love that table. Oh, bollocks. It requires assembly. Requires assembly. A time, a pissing. <laughs> The chefs are heading to some of London's best markets to choose their ingredients for tonight's menu. Simon and James are looking for fantastic meat to wow their diners. We're looking towards the thick end of the pork belly. So we want people to enjoy what they're getting. Good quality pork cheeks. Pork liver. Yes, pork um, liver and mince. The milestone prides itself on serving amazing classic British food. That's all the pig cheeks we got. After that disappointing flying visit, they'll need to prove to me that they can deliver great food plate after plate. The people are going to see something different. I think we don't know either. Coconut? Yes. This is a hard noise. It's a good one. Kalshi and Manel are in their element in the vegetable market. For the perfect vegetarian restaurant, you need perfect vegetables. And here's the place. Vine tomatoes. Vine tomatoes. One box over there. Prasad serve up some of the most delicious and exciting food I've ever tasted. This challenge will show me if they have the potential to develop their restaurant and thrive outside their comfort zone. But you've got 50 guests coming, yeah? Yeah. It doesn't look yeah. like there's enough. Three box. It will be it's enough. enough button. Yeah. OK, good. The chefs head back to base while their front of house teams make their final purchases. Let's get that. Dessert. Yeah. But have a look at... Got 60 of those. You see that in the glass? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah so eight of these, yeah? Eight of those, eight please. Of those. That's the exact idea we're looking for. This is Prasad's chance to create an incredible interior a million miles away from their simple Bradford cafe. So we're going to get some of this one, then. How much do you want? 3.8 metres of the other one. Can I get five metres of the red? If I get rid of the red, you can have three and a half metres of each of these. Can I have five metres of both of those, and I'm cancelling the red? The chefs have just six hours to create culinary magic. We can really show we can turn these humble ingredients into something truly spectacular on the plate. To compete, Prashad will need to make their vegetarian menu really sing. When you make the curry, it's hard to make it because we're making so fresh. They're getting, getting on with it and still we are preparing. So yes, I am a little bit nervous. We don't want to panic. When you do the panic, then you always do the mistake. These dishes include baked yam and potatoes with spiced coconut and peanut filling, vegetable pilo rice, and stuffed baby aubergines. So you cut them in half? Yeah. And you stuff them with the? With the masala. Masala? Yeah. Nice. I want both restaurants to amaze and delight my diners. I don't want carbon copies of Prasad or the Milestone. OK, you're unloading the van now, yeah? Yeah. We're opening just under four hours from now, you know that? Yeah. yeah? Give me a feel, Prashad, what are they doing? What's the, what's the objective? The objective is to give a wedding fair, to give you a little bit of an, nice. a taste of the Asia. Wow. Good luck. Thank you. Quite a complicated table, not planned for. Um, oh, my goodness. Uh, it gets more complicated as we go along. OK. Guys, we're opening just under four hours, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Get going. Yes. As soon as Gordon walked in, it dawned on me what was ahead of us. We've got to perform. We don't want to let the lads down in the kitchen. They're going to do their side. We need to make sure we do our side. So there's a lot of pressure on us. With the amount of time we've got, <laughs> fingers crossed, we will literally just be ready. Bobby has been bold with his plans for the space. I hope he has time to put it off. Under pressure. Still not getting any further forward with these tables. A mess. I know we're pushed for time. Yeah. Yeah, but just run downstairs, pop your head downstairs very quickly. Looking fantastic. Okay. They're looking in a pretty good shape, aren't they? They are. And this is looking like a campsite. The biggest mistake we've made is we didn't go for ready-made tables. Right now, we're sort of on our second table. Yeah. Getting put together. We're opening in just under three hours from now, and I, I you know, we, we've got a lot to do. Yeah? Yeah. What are they? Uh, cutlery. Jesus. Where'd you go? A fucking camp shop? <laughs> we were, we were trying to go with the, with the look and the feel of the tables and match everything with the whites and the blacks. Jesus. Wow. He's fucking not impressed, is he? God. Bobby's in a mess and um, it looks dreadful. Um, pretty crap knife and forks and dreadful tables, like they've been hanging around outside a pub. Can't see the end in sight, so quite nervous. 
just need two hours. Two hours is a long time. There's no food. We didn't come all this way to lose because we couldn't build tables. Downstairs, the Milestone are much happier with their tables, but they haven't paid any attention to the rest of their space. The tables look great. Yeah. Yeah, the restaurant looks shit. There's no thought process with the tarting up four walls. I'm interested in a stunning restaurant, yeah? Yeah. That's what I would like to see, yeah? But have you got any fabrics? No. Cushions or... No, no. ...ornate pieces of furniture to liven it up? No. This is it. The idea of a pop-up restaurant, yeah? It's not just the location, but it's a shown-off aspect. Do you know what I mean? You rear your own pigs, you make your own bread, and come in the dining room, it's like... I know what you guys are like when you use your imagination. So I give you the flexibility to go and do something out of the box. OK. What a shame. Fuck you now. Oh. It's a one night only. £2,000 to create something exciting and magical and the wow factor. Milestone are going for something simplistic. They've played it safe. But that may not get you into the final. There's no lack of ambition in the kitchen, however. Simon and James are serving Slariac and Skate Scampi with their silver mullet. And braised oxtail, accompanied by English squash and wild mushrooms. That's your oxtail. Yeah. So you should be happy. That's cooking time. Yeah. That tastes delicious. Really nice. It's mm -hmm. not over 10 days, Josh. That's lovely. If they pull this food off, it will be amazing. What's this one here? Peas in there? It's a uh, motor paneer. Peas and paneer. Mm -hmm. That's delicious. That's delicious. Pigs are taking shape. Two tables are done. Time is on our hands. You've got all the cutlery on the table for both courses? Uh, no. We haven't unwrapped it yet. Do you care, Bobby? I care a lot, Bobby. You do? I, I, I'm worried. Shit cutlery, plain Jane dining room, and I know you can do better. I'm really sorry. With very little time left before Prashad opened their doors, Kalshi goes upstairs to the dining room. We have made some er errors, you know, uh, but we can't constantly focus on them. We can't change those errors right now. It's OK. It's OK. Yeah? Yeah. I'm sure you will do it. This is it. It's shit or bust. If it goes bad, we're back to Sheffield. We've done the best we can, but we're here to win it. Listen to me, yeah? Every part of what we do is with our heart. We're a 22-seat restaurant working our guts off. If we're not good enough, we're not good enough. We'll still give it our best shot. We're opening in just under five minutes from now, and this is it. Everything they've worked for all day depends on the service, and I've never had an evening that's been so dependent on an amazing performance in the kitchen because both restaurants have been let down by the front of house, and it's up to the kitchen now to redeem themselves in a big way and pull it back. It's seven o'clock, and outside the pop-up restaurants being run by my two semi-finalists, queues of hungry diners wait to be seated. When those customers arrive, blow them away. Warm welcome, a three-hour service. But prove to me tonight why you deserve a place in the final. Good luck to both restaurants. Each restaurant can seat 25 customers. And if they can squeeze in a second sitting, they could serve as many as 50. Good evening, my name's Bobby. Come and have a seat. I want them to really impress me and ensure my diners have a thrilling, once-in-a-lifetime dining experience. Straight away, Bobby and his brother, Mayer, are charming their guests. The chefs have put together a theme around a wedding. We're a little family restaurant. We really want you to be an extended part of our family and enjoy your meal. But are there diners hearing the Indian wedding bells? Talk to me about the decor. I guessed it was a wedding, and I didn't yeah, read did. the title. Without reading yeah. it, yeah. two yeah. seconds later, we saw yeah. it, so I think they got it right. It's a bit sort of shabby with the, the curtains and the tables and stuff, but then the um, sort of welcoming, etc., was really, really nice. Bobby and his team are quick on the draw and start taking orders. Three young bodies, two butter. Thank you. Thank you. Downstairs is a different story. 15 minutes into service, and the milestone still haven't taken any orders. Matt, Mark, while you're gassing away, 
get some orders in here. Sure. Yeah? I, they're not here for the life story, they're here for the experience. Come on. It's driving me fucking insane. Dining room's full, and not one order into the kitchen. Right, Jay, order on. Three oxtail, one pollock. First ticket in, 25 minutes later. Meanwhile, Prashad's sumptuous starters, yam and potato puri, and marinated stuffed leaf parcels are flying off the pass. And are they supposed to go out hot or room temperature? Is that the right, the right temperature? It is, yeah. It is. OK, good. It actually tastes quite nice. It's quite a subtle flavour. Madam, how's your yam? Um, this one was good, but this one's... I don't know. What is that white thing supposed to be? It's undercooked. It's kind of like... I've never seen food like this coming from you both. It's raw. Taste your food and stop rushing. Sorry. sorry Don't be sorry to me. Be sorry to your guests. We want to serve every single customer like we do at home. All right. OK? OK. Good luck, darling. I love you. Dreadful start. Delicious filling. Well, what's the point of putting it in between two slices of raw yam? Three belly, one mullet. At last, the Marstone boys are getting the food out. Yes, chef, that's it, man. <laughs> but there's mixed reviews. This is really nice. Yeah, but it slightly needs a bit more. I had the cured pollock for my starter. It was altogether quite delicious. Seems quite bland. The first two tables, food looks amazing, needs seasoning. First two tables. Chef. Chef. Mummy puri. Yeah. Thankfully, Minal and Kalshi are starting to hit their stride. Their Punjabi main courses are delicious mutter paneer, peas with Indian curd cheese, and amazing spice stuffed aubergine are going down a storm. Uh, the aubergine and uh, potato. A paneer dish was actually really, really nice. Um, full of flavour. It's spicy. It's full of, full of vindia. In the kitchen, the Milestone boys are in full flow serving their mains of pan-fried silver mullet and pork cooked three ways. Service! Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. OK, guys, oh, here we go. So we have to make coffee. Yeah, nice. Very, very nice. Starters went out and it was a disaster. Now the main courses are going out and it seems to be a lot more settled and more controlled. Outside, more hungry diners are waiting for the meal of their lives. Now we should start to be thinking of turning those tables, yeah? OK, now there's a queue outside for a Prashad experience. I don't want them in the freezing cold, nor do you. Back upstairs, tables relayed, and keep that energy in the dining room, please. With just an hour of service left, the Milestone are starting their second sitting. I'm Matt, by the way. Hi, Isabel. How you, Isabel? Oh, but upstairs, Prashad seemed to have lost all urgency, leaving hungry diners waiting outside in the cold. At this rate, there won't be enough time before closing to take an extra sitting. Come on, come on, you've got to work and talk at the same time. I'm sorry, I'm, I, you know, it's almost like kids say, uh, Dan, it's like not everyone's given up. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Unless the whole family pulls together, no one else will be eating in Prashad tonight. Me now, Kelsey, can you go upstairs and help clear the tables, please, yeah? Please? We've got just under one hour to go, OK? So, can you go upstairs and polish the table so we get some more tables sat no, down? No, don't go upstairs yeah. and polish you the guys, table. I'm telling them to do it, yeah, because you need help. The customers have listen, listen to me. The table There's yet. nothing to do. So I'm asking them to give you a hand. And you're no. getting arrogant and saying no. Please go upstairs I don't and help us. I'm doing the tables. You can get chippy with me. Yeah. I'm asking them, your mum, to go upstairs and help you. You get defensive. I do, yeah, because we don't like her to do those jobs. Right. We do okay. those jobs. Fine. The table, don't clear the table yourself, we'll clear it. So we'll she take... can't polish the table? No, she can't. She can't relay it? No. Wow. Yes. Yeah. They cracked under pressure, clearing tables away and trying to sit customers that are standing outside in the cold. Um, it's difficult to have that level of arrogance and get it thrown in my face like that. You know, that's, that's his call. But... Stay calm and deal with it. Um, I've stepped up and said to him, I shouldn't have probably said to Gordon, you know, he knows exactly what should do, what shouldn't. I'm really sad because I respect that man. To stand up to him like that, not clever. Bobby has finally turned some tables. And Minel and Kalshi have fixed the problems with their yam starters to the delight of Prashad's new guests. I've got um, a yam dish and it's 
it's really spicy and really tasty. The spice is not too hot. It's just, it's just right. It's lovely. We started shit. We can finish strong. Come on. One batch of yeah. yeah. Running them round, finish strong. Running them round, finish strong. Come on. I can't help but want to approach you and say sorry, but uh, it's not the time, is it? Simon. Come here, man. Come here. I'm not here to fight with you, no. yeah? I'm here to support. Sure. Big day, tough day, everyone's under fucking pressure. You've got 20 minutes left, yeah. pull it back. We will. 20 minutes left, we'll pull it back. Right, scamp here. 10 seconds, 10 seconds, oh. I can do, yeah? I love the way both Prashad and the Milestone are now doing everything they can to serve their diners wonderful food. Quick, now, 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 now! And both dining rooms are buzzing as the final plates have been served. Best course of the evening I've had, and I'm very impressed with that. Delicious. Five, okay. four, okay. three, two, yeah. one, and stop. Seth, turn everything off, please. Yeah. 10 p.m. and service is over. It's been a long, tough day for both restaurants. <laughs> well done, man. I hope we've won this. Can't guarantee it. There's no guarantees in this, um, because, I mean, we've... we've We've thought we've lost before and we've won, so we don't know. I know we didn't perform to the level that we would normally. A lot of people didn't, some people didn't like the food. Come here, come on. I have to really, really protect my, my ladies. We did everything the best we could. I know, I know. <laughs> Prashad and the Milestone have embraced this huge challenge and have a lot of satisfied customers. But both restaurants had problems in their kitchens and front of house. Nice. Best of luck. You're welcome. Thank you. Great job. Good night. Now I have to decide who deserves a place in the final. This has to be the toughest challenge both restaurants have ever faced. Quite frankly, from both restaurants, I was disappointed because I knew that the personalities didn't shine. Tonight, you undersold yourselves. Prashad, I didn't see Bobby the face of Prashad tonight. Let's be honest. Milestone, I felt that you spent far too long getting those first three or four tables in. I'm standing outside, knocking, get the orders in, get these guys out the traps. And on the back of your performance and your performance, let me tell you, it is so difficult to gauge an outright winner. Two phenomenal restaurants were put on the spot today. The restaurant going through to the final. Is Congratulations. Thank you You're very much. Partner. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Well thank you. Gutted, really. Really gutted. But End of the day, we did our best. I'm still proud of what we did. Uh, really proud of James, the boys in the restaurant. Chin up. Yeah, let's go get some peers. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Come here, well done. Well done. Yes, good job. You're in the final. And good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. What a final. Prashad versus Casimir. A small 20 seater. Vegetarian Indian restaurant from Bradford up against the Young Guns, the Michelin star. Boys, tip for the top. Fucking game on.
For six months, my team and I have travelled all over Britain. Tasting, considering and arguing over the great restaurants you nominated. I've put all these contenders through a series of gruelling pressure tests. Do you understand me? We are not going to be late. Yang Jing the Liar. Yang Jing And I've been blown away by their drive, determination and passion to reach the final. Let's show the world what Prashad really is. Let's yeah. rock, let's show Ramsey, let's go. And now it's the final showdown. Just two restaurants remain. Incredible Indian cooking, combining passion and great skill, Bradford's amazing Prashad, and my best Italian, avant-garde Casimir from Bristol. What a fight this is going to be. On the one hand, I've got two very talented young guys cooking ultra-modern Italian food like no other restaurant anywhere in England today. On the other hand, I've got this tiny Indian restaurant headed up with the mother and daughter-in-law that, quite honestly, are cooking some of the most delicious vegetarian food I've ever tasted anywhere in the world. This, for me, is going to be one of the most difficult choices I've ever made. Having made it this far, both restaurants think they have what it takes to win this competition. We really want to win, you know, there's no doubt about it. We want to win. We're going there to, to, to hopefully uh, be crowned Ramsay's best restaurant. We can do it, you know what I mean? We can really seriously bloody do it, can't we? Yeah, absolutely. Casimir's journey to this point has been far from easy. Their avant-garde take on Italian food is bold and delicious. Really good. Presentation, uh, unique. But sometimes it's too experimental and doesn't always hit the mark. Is the fish meant to be cooked like this? It's a bit of a strange consistency. It is. In the semi-final, these ambitious young chefs showed me they have the balls to strip back the excessive frills and become worthy finalists. Well done. You can smile. You can smile. We look at you. <laughs> Bradford's Pashad has been the surprise of this competition. And now this humble restaurant has tasted success, they're hungry to win. This is the tough, very tough competition, I tell you. Work hard and live to God. We will fight so much and we want to win. We want to win. It will be the biggest day in my whole life. Their small, unpretentious restaurant serves fantastic Gujarati cuisine with no airs or graces. That is delicious. One mouthful of that, I feel like I'm back in Mumbai. Whatever I cook, it's from my heart. I love cooking. I sent in a coachload of diners, but not everyone was happy to be in a vegetarian restaurant. I'm a confirmed carnivore, so anything without meat isn't really classed as a meal. But they all left converted. Amazing presentation, and then the taste itself. I think we'll try and come here again. Mummy yeah. puri! The exquisite food and sheer determination of Minal and Kelshi booked them their place in the final. It's Bashar. Yeah! Everything has been building to this moment. One final grueling test which will help me choose my best restaurant. My finalists are travelling to Petrus, my new central London restaurant. These luxurious surroundings will be the battlefield for the biggest day of their cooking careers. It's here they'll fight it out for the title of my best restaurant. Oh, wow. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. Winning this will be for everyone, my parents, my family, my customer as well. No, I haven't really sunk in until now, is it? No, this is not. like the final one, this is what we need to do. The food's going to be absolutely perfect, and we've done before. Absolutely crazy. After all these years of putting in hard work, doing something what's really different, and people not necessarily agreeing with it and following us, hopefully this is going to prove a lot of people wrong. I believe my God helped me. So definitely we work hard, we're coming to work hard and hard and hard, and I can see what hard working pay. Wow factor. <laughs>
and I'm expecting nothing less than perfection. Each team must produce a stunning three-course menu that sums up what's best about their restaurant, encapsulates their love of food, and demonstrates their passion for cooking. If we get it right, it will simply just be bliss, and people will just enjoy it and say, God damn, that's a lovely dish. Bobby and his brother Maya will be running service for Prashad, whilst mum and dad team Paco and Susan will be running front of house for the Casimir boys. We know the food is going to come fantastically good. So let's match the food with the service. I've packed the dining room with some of the brilliant restaurant teams that have taken part in this competition. So both food and service will be under extreme scrutiny. We're going to give our heart on a plate in passion, in love, in dignity. Every single thing counts today. And I've got one more surprise for the restaurants. My finalists will also be cooking for one of Britain's best chefs, Angela Hartnett, and my two secret diners. Today there's no secret footage. You actually be cooking live in front of them, sat on the chef's table. And they'll be tasting, scrutinizing, dissecting, and really getting to grips with what you think is your best menu so far. Excited? Very. Yep. This is it. Make it count. Do not send anything that's less than 100% perfect. Good luck. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Gordon. We're opening in one minute from now, yeah? Good luck. Thank Off you go, guys, yes? Thank you. Thank Please, you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck, yeah? All Thank the best. We'll do our best. All right. Yeah. Tonight, I'm choosing my best restaurant. Will it be Casimir from Bristol or Prashad from Bradford? This will be the service of their lives. First up, the starters. Away now, three stunning risotto. True to form, John Ray and Peter are pushing the boundaries with an experimental dish. At their Bristol restaurant, they're known for their avant-garde take on Italian cuisine. Still in their 20s, these two young chefs are fearless in their approach to cooking. They retain the flavours and spirit of Italian food, but give it their unique stamp. We think in our own little world almost, in our own little bubble. What sometimes can come across as being young and naive, but I think it also helps create what we are, and that's something different. Their starter for the final is risotto with mushrooms and rosemary, but naturally, it has a twist. We're going to use new potatoes to create little grains of rice that are going to give you that impression in the mouth of you're eating rice, but instead you have that amazing flavour of potato. This dish is typical of Casimir. It's clever, unusual and packed full of flavour. It would be a lot easier just to get the rice, I think, but we will take it to depths that not many chefs will have the time or even patience to do. First, the potatoes are laboriously cut into individual shaped grains of rice. Next, Peter and John Ray finely chop garlic and shallots with the precision of surgeons. It's not all about speed sometimes, it's about perfection and getting it right. Followed by button mushrooms and porcini. They're going to have a real depth of flavour to them, a lot more than the fresh mushroom itself. It's about just playing around with textures and with flavours. Just like a traditional risotto, they start by sweating the shallots off in olive oil. I don't want to bring any caramelised flavours, keep it very clean, very pure. Next, they add the garlic and porcini. So that, that start getting that background flavour into the dish. Pour in the white wine and reduce. So now we're going to put in the potatoes. Exactly like we've been putting kind of really rice. And then go with our chicken stock. And what the chicken stock's going to do is just reduce, bring out the starch from the potatoes, so you're going to start to get the creaminess. Then they add mushrooms, chopped rosemary, grated parmesan. It just screams Italy, definitely. It's just fantastic. Butter for richness, and to give it a delicate onion note, chopped chives. We look at ourselves sometimes as artists. We don't just assume that we're chefs. What we do is just replicate masterpieces of work again and again and again. Finally, this mouth-watering masterpiece is finished with rosemary-infused oil. The flavours are brilliant. I don't know whether I like these pans. These pans made it so small. Hey, eh? They're so small. I know, they're shit. The experimental nature of the boys' cooking means it requires extraordinary attention to detail, and this is really slowing them down. I just need some bigger pans. These are very small. Why now? Just say it to me now. That's what I said. You've got to get organised, guys. I'm going to the best restaurant, not the most disorganised. No, stop. Yeah, sure. To make matters worse, they aren't working together properly either. As one cooks the first order, the other should be getting the next ready. How long for that first chef table, please? Uh, one minute, chef. Thank you. Are you starting the six behind it? 
Yeah. Is anyone starting? I'm just saying, is anyone six, starting? Yes. We yes. Get OK, good. Out. If I boast about the teamwork, yeah. it has to deliver the teamwork. Do you understand? There's no yes, point chef. in John Ray watching you and you watching John Ray. Yes, chef. Let's go. Get involved together, guys. Yes, chef. It's really massive pressure, but hopefully we're just going to cook what we always cook from the heart and everything's going to be perfect. Well, it won't be if they don't start working together. Customers are waiting and Casimir haven't served a single dish. When you said eight minutes, we're now now in 12 minutes. How long for the first risotto? Chef, two minutes. I want to two get minutes. perfect, Chef. Thank you. Let's go. So is he not going to serve it while you get the next one ready? Come on, guy. Pete, look at me, please. Yeah. Can he look at me? Hey, guy, no, come here, both of you a minute, look. Yes, yeah, sure. So can he not serve that while you get the next one ready? Yes, I do, that. Come chef. on, then, guys, okay. please. Finally, the risotto leaves the kitchen. Hey, I just need a system now. Yes, Chef. Sorry, hey, I know it's hard getting out of the traps. Yes, I chef. appreciate that, but I need a fucking system yes, here. Yes, Chef, it's yeah. working now, Otherwise, chef. we're going to sink. Yes, Chef. Sink, sink, sink. Although the boys are sending out food slowly, their parents are doing their best to be charming. So this is a new potato risotto with wild mushrooms and rosemary oil. So it's just playing with your mind with uh, different textures. The first restaurant Casimir defeated on the way to the final was the fantastic Italian Manula from London. What will head chef Santino think of their starter? They're pushing the boundaries further. They're taking what risotto is and saying, let's take the rice out and replace it with potato. I mean, who the hell would do that? I mean, but it really did work, so it's very clever. Thumbs up, definitely. <laughs> Casimir's food is going down well, but the boys are worryingly disorganised. That was bullshit. Let yes, me tell you why. You can't stand there with your head in a pan yes, chef. and then run up to the hot plate and start serving food. And you can't stand there, my man, and look around him. You've got to work together. Yes, chef. Yes? yes chef. Pop up. Tandem was amazing. Yes. Raw loss of road. Amazing. But there seems to be no system here today. Yes, chef. Got to get a system. Come yes, on. Chef. I know, chef. Fuck me. Time to find out what my experts made of Casimir's starter. Uh, risotto, how was it? It's delicious, slightly salty for me, but really? overall flavour I thought was delicious. Would that taste better than a normal risotto done with a boro rice? That's what we said. Yeah. said. What is the point? There's no point in having yeah. a But it's just different. Potato. They're always trying to do something yep. different. They're always pushing it and reinventing things, and yep. that's quite fun. That's Did it work, do. yes or no? I loved it. Did it work, yes, yes. or no? Yeah. Yes, it worked. For their starter, Prashad are making chat, a delicious take on a traditional Gujarati street food. Prashad's small 22-seat Indian restaurant in Bradford has been at the heart of the local community for 18 years. Over time, they've transformed humble vegetarian dishes from Gujarat in northwest India into something truly magical. When I'm making any food, I'm so happy. I put my positive thinking and my love, so I'm making not for the business, I'm making like my family. Chat's a popular street dish, but it isn't easy to prepare. This recipe has layer upon layer of wonderful flavours. Looks simple and sounds simple, but a lot of going on. Three sauces, boiling potatoes, boiling chickpeas, frying pastries, making chilli sauce, making noodles, we making our own samosas. It's complicated. First, Minal prepares a rich tamarind sauce by boiling tamarind, dates and jaggery and unrefined cane sugar. Sour is a tamarind and sweet, we were going to put some dates. So right balance, sweet and sour. Next, Kalshi slices samosa pastry leaves into squares and deep fries. Right brown color, then it crispy. For the noodles, Manal blends gram flour with sunflower oil. It's like soft, smooth. If it's not smooth, then it's noodle be funky. Meanwhile, Kalshi's on to the next sauce blending garlic, chilli powder, salt and lemon juice. Want to try? Yeah. It's like very hot things. I like extra hot. Then the samosas. First they fry peas and add turmeric, coriander and garam masala, a special blend of spices. Garam masala is my own garam masala. I roast it and then I grind it myself. That's why the everything's so tasty. Finally, potatoes are boiled, diced and turned into the mix. The last process is a delicate one, filling the samosa pastry. It's a lot to do. If something goes wrong, it's difficult. Samosa is a, you know, is a very tricky, very tricky. The balance of flavours and textures in this dish are pitch perfect. Sweet, sour, spicy, crunchy and soft. The way that Prashad brings vegetarian food to life is a revelation. I am 100% will win.
Prasad, five covers away, table one, yes? Thank you. Okay. Minal, I want to hear you. Just disintegrated. Minal, I want to yes, hear you. Yes, 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 sir. Mummy, three binda. Five have gone. I need six now, please. Thank you. Yeah. In contrast to the Casimir boys, Minel and Kalshi are showing fantastic teamwork from the word go. Mom? Yes. You all right? Yes, fine. How are you? Fine. Are you doing those uh, other two, please, uh, Minel? Yeah, that yeah? one. Good. Hold OK, good. One. Thank you. Minel and Kalshi are really hitting their stride. Their organisation is spot on, but they need to watch their presentation. All this stuff off there, yeah? Oh, oh now every time, yeah? I can't wipe your plates. Yeah. I cannot wipe your plates, yeah? OK, go, please. That's table three. OK. Bobby is integral to the success of Prashad. His service throughout the competition has been charismatic, professional and knowledgeable. Hi there. Really you enjoying? Enjoy. Nice combination of flavours. Thank you, thank nice. you. Yeah, we try to... It's a traditional street dish, so basically the hot with the cold, yeah. the sweet with the spicy, yeah. uh, just to kind of ignite all your flavours all the way through the meal. He's also playing his part in the kitchen, encouraging Minel and giving her customer feedback. Minel, yes. Table number three. Compliments to the chef. The starters are amazing. Thank you. Keep coming. Thank you. But just when it's all going so right, dishes get sent to the wrong table, and Bobby's two starters short. The uh, seven and eight starters have been plated to a ready table for starters, which is table number five. Can I take two of these and complete that Just starter? Stop. A mistake like this can throw a kitchen into chaos. If they're not clear, they come back down with a tray. OK. And they tell me, and I rectify it again. OK. They cannot go to a different fucking table. So when I send two chat away on seven and two away on table eight, it's got to go there. Minel doesn't miss a beat. She just deals with the problem smoothly and efficiently. I cannot have this mistake starting with the main course. OK. Let's go. I need two more. Got a bit of a telling off. Not good. Uh, but we've rectified that. How long for the chat? Five minutes. Let's go. Uh, I've got two to table one, please. Let's go. Nice and steady. Let's go. I'll wait now. Two, Shaz. Let's yeah. go. In the first round of the competition, Prashad came up against another exceptional Indian, the brilliant from London. What will front of house manager Dipna think of their chat? I really like it. The combination of the sweet and the kind of tangy flavour comes through really nicely. Now to hear what my experts made of Prashad's starter. I quite like the adventurous task of trying to put the hot samosa <laughs> inside. The garnish. Yeah. The joy of Prashad is that they are very comfortable within their own boundaries. And, you know, we've eaten some fantastic food up in Bradford. OK, go, please. Good. Play down. Well done. Well done, well done, well done. Starter's finished. I need to taste both dishes. Prashad's chat. Mm. Nice. Got that heat. That nice, sweet tamarind flavour. I like the hot samosa running through, but it's got that balance between the sweet Savory and the heat there as well. Very good. Risotto of new potatoes. Only these guys would turn potatoes into granules of rice. It's very rich with the seps. You can only eat two or three mouthfuls of it, so it's not like a proper risotto. However, very clever. If there's one criticism on that, it's just a touch too salty. Two very interesting starters. Um, right now, which one to prefer out of those two? <sighs> what I have to say, Prashad. <laughs> My finalist, Casimir, the culinary alchemist from Bristol, and Prashad, the masters of vegetarian Indian cuisine from Bradford, are battling it out for the title of My Best Restaurant. I want both these amazing restaurants to do their talent justice tonight, so I'm expecting perfection in their main courses. It's getting very tough. Now it's coming to the main course, and the main courses are tough. OK, Casimir, three stunning turbot away, chef table, yes? Yes, chef. Prashad, three stunning bindi, Chef table. Okay, Looking yeah. fantastic, yeah? Thank you, really good. Hey, guess they're a little bit slow. They need to improve yeah. their coordination skills rather than sort of trying to cook silently. As one table's going, they should have one working, so there's not that static in between. John Ray and Peter never make life easy for themselves. At their restaurant in Bristol, they're always pushing the boundaries with their food, trying to create new and exciting flavour and texture combinations. Sometimes we play too extreme but I think that's just because it's the way we are we will always take it that step further we'll never hold back we'll always put it up there and 
give it our best shot. For their main course, they've stayed true to their inventive spirit, pairing meat with fish. When Peter first presented this to me and I tried it, I was just blown away. I just thought it worked fantastically. They're cooking roast turbot with chicken wings and roast salsify. Peter starts by filleting the fish, and it isn't long before he pulls out one of his potions. Now we're going to use something called protein glue. Protein glue, or transglutaminase, literally bonds fillets together. By just sprinkling it over the top, then we just match up the fillets from the top to the bottom. We create that kind of big, thick piece of fish. Then the salsify, a vegetable from the root of the purple salsify flower. It's very earthy, but it's got sweetness as well. Almost like a, a kind of sweetness of an oyster. True to Casimir form, all the ingredients in this dish are cooked sous vide in a water bath. So we place that inside a vacuum pack bag. The fish takes 15 minutes, the chicken wings take 12 hours. Anything good takes time, I think. As long as we can see a great end result, then it's worth all the time on the board. Next are herb jus, a blend of chives, chervil and parsley. It's pureed, finely sieved, and then placed in this machine that creates a vacuum, removing all the air bubbles. We use this all the time, constantly. So there's no more waiting four days for things to rest in the fridge so the air comes out. So you can see now it's pure. I've criticised Casimir for overusing the water bath because not all ingredients suit it. So have they learnt their lesson? The whole secret is just to finish it in a pan and just let the skin just crisp and create that caramelised golden flavour in it. Unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. It's great news because customers are comfortable with pan frying, but it's just one more stage in an already complicated process. The most key thing is the timing of everything. You know, if the timing's not there, then we'll pr pretty much be screwed. This is beautiful, refined cooking. Simplicity on the plate achieved with technical precision and attention to detail. We're under a massive amount of pressure today. You know, Gordon wants 110% and he pushes you all the way. Not only does he want speed, uh, some communication, but he wants the dish that's gone out perfect. You know, obviously, you see tonight we've got like three people on the chef's table, that we've got a please and the rest of the diners. So, absolutely mad experience. Casimir's main course is a complicated dish and it will demand the kind of teamwork they haven't shown yet. Can't get no colour, you know, you just don't get no uh, heat into this goddamn food, mate. The boys are still infuriatingly slow getting food out. I need to see some yes, form sir. of fucking teamwork going on. Yeah. Yes, if there's sir. one thing I've got with you guys, it's a stop, start, stop, start. You've got to yeah. get 21st century flow. Yes, it's sir. nice to push the boat out, but you've got to get into a flow, yes? yes Finally, they seem to be hitting their stride. Shovel just like over the sauce one. Yeah, one there, one there. And the food looks amazing. Yeah, good, go please. Table one, thank you. Let's go, guys. But how has the unusual combination of chicken and fish gone down with my diners? Turbo works excellently with me. I think it's absolutely sound choice that they made. The turbo was perfect. The chicken wings were really good, and the salsa fry brought it all together. The creaminess in the middle, again, is what I expect from Casamir. They're very clever, they know what they're doing, and he was executed really good. Let's go. Thank you, that's ready. Pete. That turbo looks fantastic, guys, yeah? Thanks, Keep it chef. going, yes? Yes, chef, we're working on chef. Whilst the boys' daring dish has really impressed, upstairs their parents... Sushi, sushi. ..are clearly feeling the strain. Are on the pillow for the other lady. Yeah, okay, pocket. Shh. Right. Right. Stop going on, Packer. With one course still to go, will they be able to hold it together? I'm feeling a little bit under pressure, a little bit. This is Gordon Ramsay's best restaurant. You want to do your best. Time to find out what my experts on the chef table thought of Casimir's main course. I think elements on that plate were fantastic from Casimir. I love the roasted salsa fry. I love the way they used the chervil on the plate. I thought that was delicious. It was a fantastic combination. The jus brought the whole thing together, seasoned the whole plate perfectly. Yeah, I thought it was a good effort. Yep. You know they can cook. The salsa be puree was delicious. The roasted salsa, we, we show up an experience when they're hard. You know, they yeah. did it perfectly. And they're being really, really inventive. They're coming up yeah. with new dishes specifically for this competition. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, I think I'd admire that. Yeah. The ballsiness. Yeah, it's great. They... In contrast to Casimir, Prashad have chosen to cook a simpler main course. It's not hard because every day we're making this. We're so happy. Gordon like. He said, very good, very good. So we're happy. We're happy. We got a confidence now. They're putting their faith in a dish that's loved by the devoted band of Bradford regulars. What we've chosen the meal is a traditionally Gujarati meal. Okra is very popular. My customer loved the okra. Indo Prasad is a fast time selling this. The key to Prashad's success is the way they transform traditional family recipes with their unique balance of tastes, 
textures and spices. In India, every two days, we eat in okra and the dal and the rice. For the main course, they're cooking okra curry, served with a Gujarati dal soup, rice and raita. Minau starts by chopping an onion and frying it with fenugreek seeds and chopped garlic. Then Kalshi adds turmeric, red chilli powder, ground coriander and tomatoes. Next, the okra, sometimes called ladies' fingers. It's a type of green bean. It's sticky inside. So if you dry them the day before, it's better. If you make fresh, then it stick with each other. Kalshi fries it and adds it to the curry. Next, the lentil soup or dal. Lentil is take time because we need to boil. It's not ready. At least 15 minutes. <laughs> when the lentils are ready, Manel liquidizes them and then adds liquidized tomatoes. Then the prashad magic. Turmeric, red chilli powder, jaggery and finally coriander. This is a very balanced meal because okra, it's not too spicy curry. That lentil soup, it's very creamy and rich and a little bit of sweet and tangy. So flavour is balanced very well. Finally, Minel fries dried chilies and adds cumin and then returns to the dal. I'm just checking whether it's... Yeah, it's done. In Indian cuisine, is uh, not much going on in the presentation. So now I have to try a bit harder. As Gordon says, we need finesse when we're serving. The complex interplay of taste works brilliantly in this dish. Creamy, crunchy, cold, spicy. Prasada always trying to elevate humble vegetables to haute cuisine. How long for the five, please? Ten minutes. Ten minutes, thank you. What's really impressing me today is how Prasada trying to keep the soul of their homely Gujarati dishes, but giving them a facelift for my restaurant. Let's go. But as service ramps up, even Prashad's calm facade is beginning to crack. Food is being spilled and they're starting to get in each other's way. Excuse me, please. Oof! Minal! You got spare? Yeah, I got plenty. Put on it and look good luck. You want my vitalia, sir? Yeah, away now. But Bobby's back on form and holding it together in the dining room. We're in the flow now. The food's coming up, it's, it's good and it's been received well. Have Prashad done enough to convince my diners their main course is worthy of the final? Much better presentation. Yes. Much better presentation. It's contemporary and it's modern, which I like. I've never thought I, I liked okra, but actually, the, the, this okra is delicious, isn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful. But will it be enough to impress my demanding experts? Prashad's Bindi, how was that? Okra. The tastes were really intense, very powerful and um, really expertly done, and done with ease. You can tell the person that cooked that, they just do it with ease. It comes, you know, it's very passionate, and it just, it's really skillful, very yeah. impressed. Very hard to get okra tasting delicious. But it was good, the okra was great. I just think they could have lifted everything slightly one level up. OK, Kao Xing, me now. Main course is all gone, good job. Great job, yes? Clear down, get ready for desserts, yes? After judging the starters, I put Prashad ahead on the night. Has Casimir's main pulled it back? OK, main courses. Casimir. Turbot cooked. Water bar. Puree. Delicious. There's elements of maturity across this plate because they're listening. They're using the techniques they're akin to with this slow cooking water bath, but they're bringing in, you know, the roasting of the turbot at the end. Very clever. But the chicken and the turbot work, and there's harmony there. Really good. Prasad. Wow. Mm, that's delicious. Just, you want more? Okra's delicious. It's got a little crunch. It really is vibrant. And a nice blend of spices. Really nice. What they have done, across this main course is they've refined it. They've really brought Gujarati to Knightsbridge. Both teams have really taken on board my constructive prison and today delivered two fantastic main courses. Which one would I prefer? Right now, both of them. The dessert will be the decider. Both teams have to keep their nerve and cook the dish of their lives.
Okay, right, guys, last course, yeah? Me now, Kalshi, last course, keep it going, yes? Yeah. Okay, end on a high, yes? From their small deli attached to the restaurant in Bradford, Prashad serve a huge range of deliciously sweet Indian desserts, which Kalshi and Manal are attempting to modernise for their final dish they hope will win them this competition. We're making homemade Indian sweets. This sweet is a delicate, same time is a rich also. Gordon will definitely like it. He liked my food, so I'm sure he liked this one also. All three of their traditional Indian desserts use a combination of ghee, flour and sugar. Either refined white or the Indian favourite jaggery, an unrefined sugar that is extremely sweet but extremely popular in Indian desserts. Sesame seed and jaggery get together very well. One's rolled with sesame seeds, another is flattened, spiced with cardamom, then finished with pistachios and almonds. And the third and final sweet is a simple blend of sesame seeds and jaggery that is cut into squares. And the finished dish will be washed down with sweetened ginger tea. In India, people, how they drink the tea, half milk, half water, boiling up, put some ginger and sugar, and keep boiling until it's really good taste. I think Prasad have been clever to create a simple dish that is easy to plate and requires very little cooking during service. It's a nice way of finishing a classic main course. What I like about it, it's quite modern. And they've sort of taken a leaf out of Casimir's book there and thought, well, they're doing that with Italian food. I can do that with vegetarian Indian food. Clever. They look fantastic. But before I make my own mind up, I want to see what my experts and diners think of these modernised Indian sweets. I was quite excited the way they made them look almost like sort of um, little miniature petty fours. Yeah. They look very, very yeah, sweet. They look pretty, they look pretty. Uh, but they were just eye-wateringly sweet. Sometimes you get a sugar rush. This kind of gave me a sugar bash on the head, you know. Really? I thought, well, yeah, it was just too much. Very different, but then they're quite traditional within themselves. So I thought that was a nice mixture of old and new and trying to mix it up a bit. I like the one at the end, which was the slightly harder one um, to me mainly because it was less sweet, you know, it had a great structure to it, you know, it had a lovely sort of buttery, nutty yeah. flavour mm -hmm. to it. I don't think they'll ever get away from those no. over-sweetness style, but I have to applaud them for their totally. modernisation of a dessert. I thought it was great, yeah. I think yeah. they did a great thing today. Yeah. Actually, the flavours on this probably remind me of one Indian restaurant because it's very spicy, very um, fragrant. When I actually bit into the... Um, that there was one sesame laddu, which we call it. That was really nice. I really liked that. I don't like ginger tea at all, but I liked that ginger tea. It wasn't too gingery, if I, if I must say so. Casimir. Yes, yes. Chef. Again, John Ray, Peter, end on a high, please. Yes, yes, chef. yes chef. Last course. Yeah, come on. Yes, chef. Make yes, it work, yes? yes chef. For Casimir to beat this, they'll have to really pull something out of the bag. But the panna cottas they prepared earlier were way too thick. So now they've set, they're much too solid. Just melting back down the uh, panna cottas at the moment, so just getting the gelatine level right, putting more milk into it, I'm gonna put some pine nuts back in, some sugar, and uh, hopefully restore feet. This is a brave move late in the day, but everything these boys do is risky, especially the rest of the dessert that they've been perfecting in their Bristol HQ. We always try to go out with a big bang or a big wow. It's gonna be an award-winning dish, and it's gonna win this goddamn competition. The first part is a lemon sorbet, but the boys are not using just any lemons. Malfi lemons are amazing. We use them all the time in the kitchen because they're bloody brilliant. Um, they're not as harsh as normal lemons um, and they've got a fantastic aroma. For us, the desserts are such an important part. But the lemons will not just be used in the sorbet. The Amalfi Coast is in southern Italy and that is where the boys want to take the diners. We want to almost recreate that Amalfi Coast smell. That's the plan. That's a little magic plan that we've got in our head. The boys are making a lemon tea, which they'll pour over the kitchen alchemist's favourite. The tea is going to be infused with zest, lemon juice. That's going to be poured on the bottom, what's going to be hot. We're going to pour liquid nitrogen. That's going to flood the aroma around the table. Bloody brilliant, and it works really well. This end of the night spectacular could steal the show, if only they get it out on time. Just send some food, will you? Let's go. Unbelievable. Everything hangs on the panna cotta. If it collapses, so will their dreams of becoming my best restaurant. Panna cottas have turned out absolutely perfect, so I'm really happy with it. Brilliant texture. That consistency looks lovely. Thank you, chef. The panna cotta is perfect. And now's the moment when it should all come together. Oh, yeah, I'll just let it hit so you've got a little bit more sweetness. OK? It's the ultimate air conditioning. Casimir's liquid nitrogen wizardry 
has wowed my experts and the diners. But is this just another Casimir gimmick? Oh, that's lovely. Oh, that is very clever. The proof of the pudding is, as ever, in the eating. Very good. Very, very good. Delicious. This is wonderful. This is really, really special. Panna cotta. Ange, how was that? I mean, for me, it was delicious. I mean, me to test, you just move it and it's got that wobbliness to it, the structure. I thought the lemon with the pineapple was absolutely brilliant. And I mean, I'm like you, I hate the gimmicky normally, but I thought it served its purpose. I love the way they tried to get that extra element in there. So it's all the senses, it's smell, it's Did taste, it work, though? Yes. It did work? Yeah. Definitely. But it, more than what, it, in, it enhanced it. It wasn't just a gimmick. When you're very inventive, like, like those chefs are, sometimes it's just all invention and no practicality, there's no purpose to it. Yeah. That had purpose and it had added purpose, to it. Yeah. And what a finale, I mean, it just looked amazing. Yeah, it was I great loved it. theater, it was yeah. great theater for the restaurant, it worked for the dish. For Casame and Prashad, it has taken a shed load of drive, determination and skill to get to the final. All our customers are happy. They eaten the food, their plate are empty. That's why we are relieved now and we're relieved. Happy. We're going to win, definitely. We are. I don't know if we won. It's too close to call again. It's too close. These guys are faster than us tonight. There's no doubt about it. We're running around like pricks. Literally running around like pricks in there. But we, we did that to show we can cook. In the dining room, thoughts now turn to which restaurant the diners preferred. My vote, definitely, because I mean. I would say overall that I preferred Pashard. I really enjoy Pashard. And my team on the chef's table have offered their expert analysis. The start and main course dessert was it imbalanced. Did it have finesse? Did it work across the three courses? Both brigades took risks in different ways. By the time they came to the end of their main course, they were in their rhythm. They've got those nerves on top of the fact that this is a massive competition. But you certainly made it clear who's fucking winning in your camp, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way he threw the balance in there. <laughs> I've listened to everyone else's opinions. Now I have to decide who should be my best restaurant. But before I choose, I'm going to taste the crucial dessert course. Desserts should always end on a high. Prashad, they've done a little selection of desserts. Sesame Seed. Mm. Very, very sweet, very heavy. And then you sort of wash that down with a ginger chai. Mm. Yes, yeah, nice. Tea's lovely. No one really knows Indian desserts that well, so to cut them up into almost like little sweet petty fours, they are delicious. Quite nice with that sweet and savoury. Quite light, and again, you've got that, mm, that vibrance. Nice. Here we go. The Amalfi Hills come to Knightsbridge. All that fragrant zest. That's like lemon pulp in there, over the dry ice, and really nice, rich Amalfi lemons. Beautiful. Mmm. Wow. It's almost like you're taking a steam bath of fragrant lemon. Now, the texture. Mmm. That's lovely. You've got that caramelized pine nuts infused across the panna cotta. Really nice. But the whole thing's fresh and fragrant. Two very interesting desserts across the board. And I uh, love Prashad's little finesse with their dessert. Brilliant. Casimir, these guys are smart. Which one for me would I eat again? Two outstanding restaurants, both of whom have proved they can deliver at the highest level. I'm about to reveal which one is worthy of the title of my best restaurant. Okay, first of all, well done. What a night. And my God, did the customers love it. Tense day, difficult day. Both restaurants have been under immense pressure. Casimir, tonight's performance, you must have balls the size of melons to announce a risotto and not put rice anywhere near the dish. You made it out of potatoes. Customers loved it. Then the combination of the turbot and the chicken wing, tough to get that meat and fish working at the same time. It worked. And then the finale. Not just the wow factor with the texture of the panna cotta, but that kind of magic on top of that. Prashad, you left the boys standing today with the way that you organize yourselves. Okra, 
One of the most unwanted vegetables anywhere in the country. Served with a dal. Yeah, they loved it. I know Michelin star Indian restaurants in this city that can't put food on a plate like that. Well done. Desserts, they're never ever going to be everybody's cup of tea because it's like a sweet petit four. But I love the attitude to refine it. Well done. Casimir, you managed to excite in a way that very few restaurants do, but you're only going to be highly successful when your customers are with you. And sometimes you step too far and you forget the customers. Prashad, Kelsey, your heart is bigger than any woman's I ever known. You're too generous. Put more in the till, yeah? <laughs> and stop giving it away. OK. That's been my experience from start to finish. It's been a tempestuous journey based on everything I've experienced, tasted, witnessed. The winner and a mighty congratulations goes to Casamia. Well done, mate. Well done. Kelsey. Well done. Prasad. My darling, that is for you. Congratulations. Thank you. Well done. Well done, my darling. Thank you. Ah, well done. Bobby, well done. Casimir, John Ray, Pete, congratulations. Well, well deserved. Well done, well done, well done. Well done. Well done, well done, well done. Come here. Well done. Good job. Good job. Well done, well done. I'm just amazed, I'm absolutely amazed. This is unbelievable. It's like a dream come true, so. I'm just so glad, man. Great sake. <laughs> Oh, my voice. We just put everything we could into it. Absolutely everything. I mean, I've never given <laughs> so much energy and passion into dishes in all my life. Literally. I know you're disappointed, Mark. I know, but we haven't lost. We came second. Remember, you're two in 12,000, Mark. Two. Yeah? We are disappointed, but Prasad need to grow. We want to learn more, and we we're going to be success one day. I'm totally gutted for Prashad. You know, you've got two self-taught ladies that cooked here tonight as if they were cooking for their lives. Their food's amazing. <laughs> hey. But Prashad was up against two real thoroughbreds that are going to leave a, a lasting impression. There are elements of that dinner tonight that was of a three-star standard, a three-mission star standard, where chefs spent 25, 30 years to perfect. This is you because you backed us. What you've allowed uh, me and Pete to do, and the direction you, uh, vis <laughs> you kind of the direction and the vision you had on, kind of what me and Pete wanted to do with food and allow us to do it. <sighs> Just give me a second. Okay. <laughs> Put my shit together. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. so so much and. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I trust you, boys. I trust you. I could see the talent. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, for Paco and Susan, was payback night, because their sons proved why their mum and dad have backed them all the way. And tonight, they shone. I mean, they really shone. Thanks, Cheers, Gordo. Cheers, Casamia.